Welcome to the suburbs with Andy and Greg. You know I worked with Polka Boy for 20 plus years. Yeah. And one of the accordion players was a male nurse. And he uh, would volunteer at a memory care facility. And he would go with his accordion and wander <laughs> around the common area playing waltzes and polkas and whatever, just as entertainment, just to maybe bring a smile to their face or spark a memory. And he's walking around, and one of the nurses is, sees, mentions to him, well, that's, that's Bill over in the corner there. He hasn't spoken in two years. So... He wanders over toward the guy with his accordion playing who knows what song and just sort of near him and sort of serenading with the accordion. And then all of a sudden, Bill yells, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> and the nurses are like, oh, it's a miracle. <laughs> he can speak. Oh, man, that is priceless. True story. You know, the beautiful thing about that is as as somebody who's been a performer for more than half of his life, uh, probably, it, you got to let that roll off. It's like not a comment on your abilities. It's just this dude being this dude. Correct. It was just a an epiphany for the staff to hear this guy <laughs> said something. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see him nestling up to him with his accordion, just sort of in a serenading sort of uh, banter, and the guy just finally snapped. Oh, my God. That made my day. That is hilarious. We've got a neighbor two doors down in Indy whose mom and dad both have dementia, and her mom has uh, Louis body dementia like my mom has, and she's been dying to talk to me. You know, she's a good neighbor to have, and she's she's friends with my wife and i find her just annoying like you, you can't even imagine you ask who the ceo is of of our little collective here and my sister desperately wants to be in charge well in the neighborhood her name is marie and and marie wants to be in charge to the point where she created a crime watch group and elected herself president of the crime watch group is this like a mrs kravitz type nosy neighbor completely like that 100 percent spot on in your assessment of marie yes peeking out the window yes and so we would get questions from her and she wanted me to 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 be a facebook friend and i absolutely refuse um, because she'll she'll call and she can't do it now because we don't have a landline anymore but she would call our house and say greg it's Marie. Hey. <laughs> uh, and that's exactly like, there, I don't do too many impressions that are spot on impressions. That's Marie right there. I can do, I can do my uh, father-in-law. I can't take it anymore. If there is one more person driving past my house past 7 PM. I mean, that's him. That's like a spot on Bill Miller and Greg. Murray couldn't be any more condescending sounding. It is so condescending. Her husband is a networking guy. So you guys have something in common there. There you go. Uh, and his name is Ned. I think he wears pajamas to bed and I'm pretty sure there's a pocket protector in his <laughs> pajama. <top. laughs> and it's, you know, you can't, you can't name a person better when you think of the total geek computer nerdy guy than ned i mean you don't get a better name than that do you when you look up ned in the dictionary you see the guy with the pocket protector and probably tape around his glasses <laughs> in the middle right that's him she sees that my truck is home because i've been doing mom duty and now i'm home and it's the weekend i i can you know exhale i don't have job drama going on i'm not watching anybody i'm not getting a text at six in the morning saying i'm ready to go shopping <laughs> you know i don't have any of that going on and so i'm just gonna hang and have coffee with keely and all of a sudden she shows up 
and she's at the front door. And, and I think it's an indication to somebody, if that person is socially aware, if you don't let them in, it's going to be a short conversation. Keep them at bay at the front door. <laughs> I've got one foot holding the storm door open. I'm not out on the porch. I'm half in the house. Sort of blocking. <laughs> and she's got a basket of goodies for me. And she wants to talk about this Zoom group that she created that plays folk music to memory patients. And you should see their faces light up. And I thought that you would want to be a part of this Zoom group so that your mom can just have one of those moments of joy in her life. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I would rather have surgery on my teeth without anesthetic than to be in a Zoom group with you <laughs> and folk music. You hear folk music. Okay, stop. <laughs> you know what? You just turned me off. I'm shutting the door on you right now. Get out. Get out! <laughs> now! I guess some Crosby, Stills, and Nash songs are considered folk music. I never thought about that. I always hear, Puff the Magic Dragon. Please don't ever sing again. <laughs> On this Saturday morning, when I want to have coffee with my wife, it's Marie. And I said, Marie, she doesn't listen to music. Oh, but surely she, no, she's a spoken word person. Like, she'll listen to Joel Osteen all day long. I've got an app on her phone when she's reached the point of saturation of questions to me about the same thing over and over. <laughs> Julie, I think it's time for you to listen to the app. Oh, okay. And she's got noise canceling earbuds that uh, she can listen to it while I'm working and be on the couch next to me with Jeffrey sitting there curled up next to her and she can pet Jeffrey and listen to Joel Osteen until she goes to sleep. It's kind of like the kids, uh, at the restaurant when the mom sits down and pulls starts pulling iPads out of her backpack and handing them to the kids so they can have dinner. Yeah, back in the day, it was crayons and something that you colored on. Here you go. Distraction. But yeah, it's kind of like that. Listen to Joel. Go to sleep. That's all I want. I don't. And so it's all spoken word. She's like, oh, maybe she, maybe she could like this other thing. She likes nothing. <laughs> She's not going to like that other thing. Would you like this collection of DVDs? Amway, Tupperware, Girl Scout cookies. What else she got? <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk to you about technology at my house. We don't have a DVD player anymore. Of course you don't. We stream everything. I know you don't do that. I know that you guys are living off the grid. You don't stream things, but we do. And it's, it's like you and I yesterday when we were talking about traveling and you see that the big calling card for the motel is color TV. That's them. <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, color TV. We've got to pull over. This is the place. Hopefully they had the magic fingers too. That's right. <laughs> and so her husband, so she wants to be in charge of the family, desperately wants to be in charge of the family, probably is in charge of the family, probably has a room in their house where they've got whips and chains and other things to keep her husband, Ned, at bay, keep him in submission. Do you think Ned, what's her first name? Marie. Do you think Ned and Marie um, engage in adult baby play? Oh, God. And now I've got to picture that. <laughs> did you just do that to me on a Saturday morning? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Adult baby play. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I guess I'm just too wholesome. And I've never thought of myself as wholesome. But I cannot. I do. I can't wrap my arms around adult baby play. At all. I'd like to think of myself as evolved beyond the needing a bib. <laughs> I find rattles to be, you know, nothing that I need in my day. Irritating sounding for sure. Everything's oversized. Giant bonnet, giant bib, giant rattle. Right. Big crib. Did they do a crib? They've got a crib? It's got to be a crib involved. A big adult crib. Okay. A big giant pacifier. Everything's oversized like those big oversized pencils. <laughs> For those of you out of the country, uh, some of our followers in Brazil or uh, India, on the north side of Indy, further north in what used to be the hinterlands is um, Noblesville, Indiana. And it's got the quaint downtown that's got the old buildings and all kinds of stuff. The courthouse. Courthouse Square. And they're reimagining that area. And I think the architecture of the new 
kind of mirrors the architecture of the old. And there was a guy downtown who had a woodworking shop. And then when they reimagined part of downtown and they added on to it, he wanted in on the lease of one of those spaces and happened to confide in somebody that uh, the warehouse space was going to be used for adult baby play products that they sold online. <laughs> Only in America. You know, they're shipping jobs with my company to India. Why can't they ship that stuff to <laughs> India? <laughs> I want no part of that. I don't want that stuff. And so the city of Noblesville happened to say, we see that as a sex shop. Right. And you're violating zoning. And he's like, it's not a sex shop. It's adult baby play. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> it's just big rattles and stuff. Come on. You know, I'd like to continue this conversation, but it's time for me to be burped. <laughs> Could we revisit this meeting with the Noblesville Chamber of Commerce um, in 20 minutes after I'm burped? It's nap time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Put me down for my nap. <laughs> yeah, and they said, uh, well, we've done a little research. And we find this to be a sex shop. We're not going to allow you to pick and pack adult baby play items, but we're also revoking your lease on the woodworking shop. Ouch. My mind immediately goes to the, maybe he was making wooden rocking horses at the uh, woodworking shop and cribs. Oversized. There you go. Oversized cribs. <laughs> I I can't even imagine. I don't know. I don't know why that's appealing. You know, we've got benchmarks as adults, you know, and I think your first one when you're growing up is to be teenager and then driving. Not revert back to a baby. <laughs> no. And then, and then legal age of drinking, you know, but yeah, I, I don't think bib wearing and, and all the other things that go along with it are a part of that. Are they? Only to a very small select few. Yes. I'm going to revisit Marie. She would call and say, Greg, Marie, say, did you notice a strange dog barking at three in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Marie, I was sleeping at three in the morning. <laughs> and what do you mean by strange? That's a hard no. <laughs> strange dog, like funny, ha ha strange or dog that I don't recognize its bark. I mean, either one, either one's going to be a no. Hyena. <laughs> yeah, that part I would notice. I would also notice coyote or fox versus neighbor dog barking at three in the morning. Greg, Marie, say, did you notice a strange car driving around the neighborhood today at about two? <laughs> no, I was working. I, I know that you're fixated on the window, poised to pounce on the criminals as they happen past, but I got a day job. And I'm working it too. And uh, and it doesn't include sitting there with my nose pressed against the window, <laughs> trying to identify every car that drives by. They look suspicious. I don't get it. So when COVID hit, her husband, I see walking around the block a lot, like multiple times a day. And he's got this, like, you know, the picture of the caveman with, with like the, whatever it is, deer skin skirt on and like he's holding a club with the nails <laughs> you know that yeah, right or a spear right <laughs> right so ned is walking around the block with this handmade tool <laughs> of defense that either that or he ordered from caveman.com and and he's got this like weapon hand weapon with a screw sticking out of the end of it. And and I see him. And every time I see him, he's like, he's, hey, Greg, how's it going? I mean, he's got one of those, like, if you've got a household with two iconic inflections, <laughs> Greg, Marie, hey, Greg, how's it going? <laughs> it's, just, it's like a cartoon character. It is. And I, I, I said... Man, I have seen you walking around the block a lot. And he, he's like, yeah, I am. I retired. I had a friend talk me into retiring. And you know what I didn't realize? And I thought, yeah, you didn't realize you're going to be around Marie all the time. <laughs> 
And so you're just, you got to get out. Joke's on yes! you. Yeah, right. He said, I didn't realize how much time I'd have on my hands. And I thought, what? <laughs> how do you? <laughs> That's kind of what retirement, how do you not know that going into life? How do you not know that when you retire, you're not going to be working an eight hour day? You're going to be at home. You live for it. I mean, it's not like New York City and you go to Central Park. You're in a suburban neighborhood in Indy. So what's he do? He goes into his garage and makes this club with a big screw sticking through it. And this is this is a quiet neighborhood with no through streets. We've got a creek that borders the neighborhood. There isn't going to be traffic like going to the 7-Eleven. <laughs> you know, or right. going to wherever. There is no destination other than one of the houses in the neighborhood. You can't go anyplace else. So it's a quiet, middle-class suburban neighborhood. So I said, what's with the club? And he said, I got attacked by a dog. And <laughs> now I I want protection. And so... I sawed off a broom handle and put a screw through it. And now if the dog comes after me, I'm ready. And I thought, wow, okay. That's an interesting choice of weapon you got there. I'm taking this dog down. I With a big screw in it, yeah. I mean, if that dog comes after him, he's pining for the fjords after that. That's a cruel and unusual punishment for the dog. For a dog nipping at your heels? Yeah. Take him down with a sharp screw. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we had forts. Some of them we built. One of them, uh, we, we kind of became squatters of a fort of older kids that kind of grew up and went to college. And we took over their fort. Like tree forts or ground yeah, fort? We took over the fort at, in somebody else's yard, like totally different people. Nobody related to us. But the main purpose of the fort, looking at Playboys. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. And so we had it down. It was a roof, shingled roof type fort with windows. And you could see if anybody was coming. And um, and the all the Playboys were in a weatherproof container. But we knew some of the dads in the neighborhood who took delivery of playboy and when it delivered and so we violated u.s postal laws by going on a walk and stealing the playboy from the mailbox oh that's a federal offense you know i do know that i think we knew it then at the time but you know that was back in the 70s when there was no internet you couldn't look at naked women on the internet and we were too young to look at them <laughs> in real, <laughs> on in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I think the women that the possibility existed, you didn't want to see naked, you know, but the <laughs> ones in the age range that we wanted to see naked, we were too young to do that. Fast forward to um, my mom's dating because my parents are divorced and um, her, her date her boyfriend, if that's, that's kind of weird, that feels a little bit like adult baby play when I say it. <laughs> her, what do you call that? Her, uh, her partner? Significant other? I guess, but they were just dating. They were just, oh, kind just of dating. Learning, yeah. Did, do we like each other enough right. to take it to the next level? And uh, he came to my swimming meet and he came up to me and he said, Hey, if you do really well, there's a gift for you at home. If you don't do well, then you don't get it. And I thought, okay, wow, that's kind of interesting. And so I go home after the meet and it's that iconic Farrah Fawcett poster. Oh yeah. With the hair, the swimsuit, infamous. Supposedly sex was written in her hair. Do you remember that? I did not remember that. No. Yeah. Supposedly subliminally they wrote in the, in the curls and swerves of her hair, sex is written in there. And I looked at it and, you know, she was definitely that fantasy of a lot of guys, but I had this mental relationship with one of the centerfolds in the Playboy in the Fort. <laughs> and so I just didn't, I couldn't get into Fair Fawcett because there was another woman that had my eye. You ain't doing it for me. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. I didn't, I didn't put, I had Alan Page, you know, big NFL 
uh, I think Minnesota Vikings guy. I had three NFL posters on my walls. Sadly, I had pictures of the monkeys on my walls. <laughs> and Fair Fawcett and the iconic poster ended up not being on the wall because I just I had this relationship with this centerfold going on in my mind. I, I just couldn't get into Farah at the time. I will say this that that poster did make two very good points. <laughs> Hi, this is Andy. If you enjoyed listening to our podcast, please be sure to subscribe and share. Remember, laughter is contagious. Help us spread it by telling a friend.